Hi guys, welcome to Pointy Not Sharp. Today we're taking a look at the Australian L1A2 bayonet uh, for the uh, L1A1 SLR and the F1 submachine gun. So this bayonet was first manufactured uh, by Lithgow in uh, 1958 to 1984. Uh, it was first issued to um, soldiers in the Australian Army on the uh, 1st of March 1959. Now these bayonets either come with a short or a long tip, so let's reach in here. This is a long tip version, and you get uh, short tip versions are a bit shorter. Uh, I've heard an anecdote that um, they issue the uh, long tips to the shorter soldiers so they can actually reach the enemy. Um, so it's based on the, uh, the British L1 bayonet, and uh, Australia and Canada made uh, their own versions simultaneously. The Canadian version is called the C1. The differences between the two, so actually I'll start with the, uh, the fuller. So the Australian fuller uh, from 1958 to 1960 is a square fuller. Uh, from 1960 to 1960, 84, they changed to a round fuller. So the square ones, they're um, about as rare as duck's teeth to find. They're quite hard to get and quite expensive. Now, the Canadians also had the square fuller, but yeah, from 1960 onwards, the L1A2 has the uh, the round fuller, and that's how you can usually tell the difference between a C1 L1A2. Uh, further, the C1 has a blade in the white, where the L1A2 obviously doesn't. The C1 will be marked, and there's an inspection slot just on the pommel down here. So this inspection slot is straight, which means it's an L1A2. The Canadians have a T-shaped inspection slot. So it's got a little um, head of the T from this angle, just at the top there. Now the actual blade is based on the um, number five bayonet from uh, World War II. So the British number five or jungle carbine. Uh, the scabbard, this actually uses a um, number five Mark I scabbard uh, made by Wilkinson in uh, World War II and a number five Mark II uh, throat. However, later Lithgow did actually make their own uh, scabbards purpose built for the L1A2 and uh, those examples have a more pointed end to the scabbard. Uh, in terms of uh, frogs, we've got uh, two kinds. So they're based off of the uh, P37 frog for the um, short magazine Lee Enfeld during uh, World War II. Uh, so this one here has been painted uh, in a glossy black for parade use, which is very, very common. Most of the frogs you find these days look like this. They also come in the green with the US wire hanger. This is what you'd use in the field, and this is what they used, what they used uh, in Vietnam. Now, I've come across a couple of these in red camo, uh, so red paint. And I know that doesn't make a lot of sense to most people, but you've got to think in the Australian outback, the dead is very, very, dirt is very, very red. So it actually makes great camouflage out there. It's near impossible to see. I've also come across a couple of these with a 72 marking uh, on the handle. Now it's a bit of a joke with the L1A2s because they're completely unmarked. That's how you know you've got an Australian L1A2. There won't be a marking on it anywhere. The 72 that you occasionally find on the grip appears to be a replacement grip from a British L1A3 because their grip part number is uh, 966-0072. So it appears the uh, 0072 is being mistaken a little bit for year of manufacture. You get people saying, I've got 1972 L1A2, but it's not the case. Uh, these are used very extensively in Vietnam. They're pretty well liked. Um, personally, I find the handle a bit small. I'm a bigger guy. I'm 6'2", 6'3". I find it doesn't quite fit in my hand very well. It's a bit small, a bit uncomfortable, especially with the button at the base. Uh, the scabbard is a one-directional scabbard, so you can stick it in one way, firm scabbard, but not the other. I don't want to press it too hard without... I don't want to damage it. Um, these are getting a bit, a bit expensive these days. On eBay, here in Australia, I'm seeing them sell for $315 to $330. Um, I did pretty well with this one. I got this one for 200 bucks, and I thought it was a regular one. Then this uh, uh, rare one with the square fuller rocked up in the mail, so I was pretty pretty happy with that. Um, but yeah, I think that's uh, just about it. Just a standard um, push button to attach it to the rifle. Same as virtually every other bayonet out there. Uh, no markings on the back of this frog. And no markings on the back of this frog. Uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. Thanks for watching.